we're rejoining Tim on his Argentinian adventure. This time he's after Axis deer. Just like the European boar, this attractive deer, which is native to India and Sri Lanka, was introduced to Argentina more than a hundred years ago for hunting. It's now successfully established itself across the country. Unlike the smaller native deer, it's open season on these fallow-like alien invaders. Here in the northwestern corner of Argentina, thick scrub is an ideal habitat for them to seek sanctuary, while making them tough to stalk, but the farmers want them thinned out. They compete with the cattle for grazing, they carry disease, and are even known to fight and injure livestock. Because of heavy rains making roads impassable, we are offered the chance of accessing the lower part of the enormous farm from the river. Tim isn't going to turn that down. So I think the plan is actually we can go on the canoes, two of us, well the four of us actually, we've got two guides, and uh, we can go down the river and hopefully we'll see some deer or some boar, and if there's an opportunity to actually shoot one from the canoe, it's going to be really, really good, but <laughs> it's slightly, uh, well it's a bit of a challenge I suppose, that's if nothing else, but this is what uh, we actually signed up for in some ways, you know, um, Carl said look, come out, this is what I can do, and then he mentioned canoes, I mean, like, really? And we thought, well, why not? So that's what we're doing. So we just kind of, in some ways, living the dream and uh, just trying everything we can possibly do with hunting. The river is fast, and if a shot presents itself, Tim is going to have to do a driven style shot. But he'll be the one moving. How does that work? Capybara are on the quarry list at the moment, but Tim doesn't fancy it. These giant guinea pigs may taste good, but we have beef, and in Argentina that is all you need. So this is more like European stalking, yeah? Yeah, where it's, it's a lot closer, there's a lot of lot of field craft. Yeah. Waiting, spotting, moving, spotting, yeah? Yes, yeah. so we'll, but we'll move really, really uh, so, slow. So what we're hoping to do is we show you guys how to do, how to do it properly. I have, yeah, I have no problem. I can show you the way you can do yeah? the stocking. Yeah. No, no, no problem whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. There are deer tracks, but it's likely they are winding us as we go. It's far too close. The, the trees. It's just we need to get out of it, but. Uh, our uh, farmer, who's getting us towards his land, unfortunately decided to, uh, thought he can jump over the little ditch. He didn't, so he's now got a very, very wet foot. He's not at all happy. And we've got about two or three kilometer, kilometer walk back. So we, we all kind of had a bit of a chuckle, but you can see he's actually not at all happy. So, uh, so instead of having four guys making a noise, we've got this one, two, three, so it's quite amusing at the moment, so I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, well, we could crack on, we need to get in some open space because it's too close. There's no way we can find a deer here, so let's crack on. Oh dear, that's not a good look. Eventually the decision is to head to the farm and have a think. It's wonderfully rustic and the Argentinian hospitality is something special. Wow, are we tasting Argentina? It's so, so rural, it's as it is, there's no airs and graces, and we're absolutely loving it. There's something exciting about walking through grass that's head height. We've enlisted the help of a local guide and he is taking us back towards the river, but with the wind in our favour. We've had about we've had about three quarters an hour walk and he's just ploughing through it and our, our guide here. You can see his boots are not quite as waterproof as as mine. It's quite exciting ploughing through that grass actually, isn't it? Just you've got no idea where you're going. And he's up here somewhere, just waiting, waiting, waiting. Then he changes direction, then the other direction. He's like, my goodness. And he, what was interesting is watching the tracks. Yeah? 
so therefore he keeps on, he stops, and he sees where the track's going, and he, he obviously just knows which way to go. So I was, I was actually watching him, how the way he's just checking things, yeah, that's fresh, not fresh, but we're gonna go that way, and then suddenly we go this way, so. Anyway, all, all in the hunt, I suppose. A lapse in concentration, and we bump some bucks. We get the feeling that this was the banker and we have just committed to stalking this evening too. But who cares, to rebuild our strength is a proper cowboy lunch break. <laughs> Beef and revolvers. Cool, that track comes up in the air a bit, mate. Algotine uses this 357 for bore when things get a little too close for comfort. Is that a, a, a common thing, or is it just because this this guy is a really good shot? I don't know many people that that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's so obviously you're a very very good sh uh, shooter with, with with revolvers. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like the revolver. You do a lot of practicing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the last two outings, we have walked miles. Carlos recommended we bring wellies for this trip, but we didn't expect to be walking 15 kilometres a day. Thankfully, the Harkila rubber has stood up well. Wellington boots. I get so frustrated with Wellington boots. It's such a simple thing, you think, but Wellington boots are drive me mad. Over the years, I've had so many leading brands of Wellington boots, and I've been so disappointed with most of them. They just do not last. So it'd be really interesting to see if these Harkeela boots outperform the rest of those leading brands. Right, this is drinking at the Last Chance Saloon. We're back on the horses for boar tomorrow, so we want to see some deer. This one is a no-go, and the thick scrub and spooky cattle are making things hard. Well, we've been out for about an hour now, it's still quite warm. Found a couple of local native deer, which had you, I think they're called. But uh, they're protected, so we can't shoot those. We've actually bumped um, two axis deer. One quite large one just now. Our guides actually are on a couple of tracks on some fairly big ones. So it's more like tracking as opposed to stalking. Our guide suggests we sit and let things settle near a known crossing point. We are caught out a bit and within a couple of minutes this youngster appears. Tim has to steady the stare on his knees as his sticks are on the deck. The youngster drops to the 150 grain 306. And this is what local knowledge is all about. Our guide knew this is a passing point, a transit area for the deer from this property to this one. And as we just sat down, within five minutes, a very, very young one just came across. Didn't have my stick to the right place, about 80 metres away, so a reasonably short. But uh, there's a few more in there. Really? So we just need to pick the, the small one up and get it up here because they're actually in there. And you can hear them making a noise. So uh, let's hope some more come back through. Well, this is my first access deer. Beautiful animal. The colouring is just uh, amazing. But they are a problem, aren't they, Carlos? In, in not, not just because they're a pest. What else? What, what are the problems with access deer in, in Argentina? Uh, they compete with the grazing with the, the cattle. Mm -hmm. um, another big, big issue is that they carry ticks. Okay, so let's talk about these, these, this, these kind of ticks. What disease do they pass on to the, to the livestock? They, they call it sadness disease. Really? Yeah, okay. at the beginning, the, the, the way uh, how they spot this, the, 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 the cow start looking really, really sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later on, uh, the cow have some electricity problems. Yeah, you can see that they, they get weak and they get very poorly, and finally they get high fever and they die. And, and there is also another issue as well. Yeah, some of the, some of the farmers, they, they found on the back of the cattle holes. So apparently uh, they've been fighting with the, with the deer. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's taken, I don't know how many kilometers we walked today. Yeah. 30 kilometers, <laughs> <Yeah. 30, laughs> <30, laughs> yeah. about 30 kilometers, yeah, it's been quite warm. This has been a well-earned lease for us, but it's been quite an adventure. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, crack on and see if we can get any more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, well done.
you get the chance of seeing a Gralic and for the first time witness it being done skillfully with a machete. Hey Childerly, this is how you do a suspended Gralic Argentinian style. You don't need your ember leaf, you need one of these. With enough light for a few more hours, the neatly packed Axis venison is hung out of the way and we continue our stalk. Through the scrub he spots a mature doe. Whistling. Yeah. Another fine looking beast. Really interesting hunt. Just walking through the back here, and we heard these deer calling. So he just said to us, right, okay, get all your rucksacks off. We're going to go native. I'm like, really? <laughs> but he said, take everything off you possibly can and just go really, really slowly because he knew they're in here. I couldn't see them, so about 50 yards and he just kept looking. One over there, one over there. I thought, I can't see it. Got my binoculars out. Oh my God. And it's straight through the bushes, about 80, 90 yards away. I wasn't too sure about the shot because there's so much undergrowth in the way. But I was managed to kind of, managed to kind of find an area. I thought, well, that looks safe to me. And, and we'd just taken it right on the side there, and, it, and immediately I saw it, it darts off to the right-hand side. I thought, oh gosh, here we go. We've been all around here trying to find it, and it's just down here. So, it's a, but anyway, that's quite an interesting stalk there, because they are so, so um, aware of you. And obviously they knew something was around, but they didn't actually do anything. But there's quite a few here, wasn't there? Yeah, quite a, about 10 of them, I suppose. So it's, it's really good. Anyway, well done, Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, you come up with the goods. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good. We found the bullets just underneath the skin. 150 grain Remington is a mixture of penetration and also fragmentation. So it's, it's designed to kind of go in quite deep and then fragment and uh, purposely for wild boar and for the bigger deer. So I think this has been an excellent um, bullet choice. And what's interesting is that uh, it's actually retained most of its, its weight. It's, it's expanded beautifully, but I would say that was, from looking at that, it's probably retained probably about 75% of its, its weight. So it's mushroomed out, it's expanded, and, 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 and put the hydrostatic shot through the body. And, and that's what they're designed to do. So after two days and 30 Ks, we have two Axis deer. It would have been nice to have seen some big bucks, but we have meat. Just hope it's as good as the beef.